there is some books that discuss Gan Eden, even Rashid Chochma, uh, that has uh, Masechet Genom, also has a section in there that discusses Gan Eden. Uh, and there's other Chachamim that discuss different aspects of Gan Eden, uh, more in a Kabbalistic world, uh, but the reason why it's not in the basic levels of the Torah is because most people uh, would not understand why it's even good. Like, for example, one of the things that it says that we do in Gan Eden is we learn Torah. Now, a person that doesn't learn Torah in this world and doesn't understand the beauty and the deliciousness of the Torah says, why would I want to go to a place where I'm reading a book all day? Like, what's the... They don't understand that. Okay, so how do you explain a person Gan Eden? I, uh, I mean, again, you, you have to explain to people in their own language. So people's own language is physical pleasures. Physical pleasures. So imagine you have physical pleasures that a person has in their life. What could they be? So you have the physical pleasure they get from food, eating delicious food. Okay? So you put that in one basket. Then you have the physical pleasure they get from getting honor. People giving you respect, saying, Kola kavod, good job, you're the best. You're beautiful, you're smart, you're, you know, everything is good, right? Okay, so you have that in another basket. Then you have physical pleasure from intimacy. Person has, a, you know, intimate relations, there's a physical pleasure from it. Okay, you put that in another, ple in a, uh, another box. And, you know, there's just a limited amount of pleasures, but nonetheless, there is different pleasures that a person has. Now you take all those boxes, combine them into one box, right? Okay, so that's for one person. Now, that person that lives life, he doesn't always have this pleasure. In fact, the vast majority of his life is not that pleasure. He's alive 24 hours. Most likely, he's not exp you know, enjoying himself at all the vast majority of that time. You know, because he's probably asleep between 6 to 8 hours a day out of the 24. So already you lost 25% of the day. Right? 25, 33% of the day, it's gone already. Right? So you got, let's say you got 16 hours left after you slept. That is probably working. Between work and traveling to work, it's probably another eight to ten hours a day. And they say, oh, no, but I like my job. Yeah, okay, buddy. You know you like your job. Would you prefer to go to your job or be on the beach or on some vacation? Okay, so you may not necessarily detest your job, but it's not a vacation. It's not a vacation. You prefer to be in other places. It's not, it's not, it's not considered as one of the pleasures of the world. Let's just say that. Let's say out of the eight, ten hours, that you like your job, let's say a half hour, an hour at most, out of that eight to ten hours, you feel pleasure. Okay, let's say they give you respect, you're the best, you're the best salesman, you're the best this, you're the best that. Let's say. Okay, so right now, we've already spent between 16 to 18 hours out of the day, but we still only have about maybe an hour of pleasure out of that, right? Then he has, you know, he's going home, he's with his wife, you know, is, but they're not always together. They're not, she's not always together with her husband. He's not always together with his wife. He's, you know, not a horse. He's a, he's, sometimes he's tired. Sometimes he's busy. Sometimes she has a headache. And sometimes she has a headache for a really long time, like years. But it's a sometimes, you know, it's a, uh, a different thing. So it, the reality of the, the, the pleasure is not always there, right? So it's the food also, the food is not always delicious. Sometimes it tastes like, you know, like a shoe. It's, sometimes it tastes like a table. Sometimes it, you wish you would have ordered Chinese food. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's not always that good. So in reality, out of the 24 hours, you're lucky. Lucky if you got an hour and 15 minutes to two hours max of actual pleasure. Max. So what does that mean, really? Less than 10%. At best case scenario... 10% of a person's life, at the best case scenario, is actual pleasure. So if he lived 100 years, 10 years was pleasure, at the best case scenario. In reality, it's much less, but let's say, okay? Now, I'm not trying to depress you. I'm just telling you reality. This is how life really is. Now, now let's say you took all 10 years of pleasure, all 10%, and you gave it to the person in one shot. Boom! That's a lot of pleasure, right? That's a, imagine all of the crazy stuff and experiences and deliciousness and, and, and good stuff that he had over a period of time. Okay, it's a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit. But if you give it to him in just one jolt, it's 10 years straight of pleasure, that's Ganadin, right? Okay, so yeah, ten, now, you put that 
10 years in a box, right? We're at 10 years now, we'll put it all in a box. All that whole pleasure for one lifetime, one person in one box, that's a lot of pleasure. Now, take not just his pleasure, not just all of his family's pleasure, not just all of his neighborhood and his town and his city and his state and his country, but rather the entire world's pleasure during that generation. You got, let's say right now, close to 8 billion people, right? 8 billion people take all of their pleasure. Some of them are going to live till 100. Some of them are going to live till 3. Some of them are going to live till 50. Everybody's pleasure. Let's say we're, you know, 10% average. 10% everybody's pleasure, put it in the box. Combine it with that other box, that's a lot of, imagine, creating all that pleasure for all 8 billion people. One shot, it's a lot of pleasure. Okay, now, it's not enough. Take, not just that generation, but every single generation that ever existed from the beginning of time, in Adam Rishon, including the generation of the flood where they had all types of horrific pleasures, all types of crazy things, immoral things that unfortunately are coming back to life today also. Sodom and Gomorrah's generation, Noah's generation, uh, the Tower of Babel generation, uh, Egypt's generation, all of the sinful generations, obviously they probably had more physical pleasures in the world than the standard. Take all of their pleasures from all of the generations, just the pleasures, no, no suffering, just the pleasure of all of them. Take, put them in a box together with that other generation. Another box, now you got a lot of, now imagine a person gets all of that pleasure, that's a lot of pleasure, right? That pleasure from all of the generations, of all of the people that ever lived, is not a single minute of the pleasure that a righteous Jew will experience in Gan Eden. That's Gan Eden. In a way that we can understand B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the Shurim that we do, myself, Rav Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat